Let's go ahead and get started. This is, uh, guys, we, right here we're on site here with a couple different things going on here. We got brick, we got tile, trim, paint, and hopefully garage doors sometime this week. And then eventually this week we'll be doing the, um, we'll be doing the rest of the, uh, the landscaping and stuff like that. So we got about five different subcontractors. We also have side and I get the guy to show up. And <laughs> let me just tell you, man, it's, um, it's really tough getting these guys showing up because these guys are, there's so much work out there right now until a lot of the subcontractors are spread thin. So if they have crews of about, if you got a crew of, of seven people, they just split those crews up to send them to get other jobs. You may have four on this job and three on this job. And then sometime the work come available again and they split those crews up. So these guys, are, like I said, guys, if you want to go into construction, um, it's wide open right now. It, it, it's a, it has taken me almost three weeks to get brick masons on this site. And, um, and I, I want you guys to, I want you guys also ask questions. You guys kind of stay in the back. Just put everybody in the background. Don't, uh, don't film any of the, any of the students, anybody just try to film me. Uh, but you can ask questions and stuff. And, um, and I can answer the questions as well. Now you can see right here, we can just kind of, just kind of walk through it. One thing you got to do, and we, we, we'll start on the brick on the outside. But one thing you got to do is you have to monitor this site. Um, I got cameras to actually see when my guys show up because what we got to understand is when you're doing construction, you're dealing with a couple different things. You're dealing with money and you're dealing with time. If these guys are not showing up and knocking this stuff out the way, and here's the thing, as a builder, your job is to make sure that things don't go undone or to complete different tasks to their entirety so that you come There you go. Hang on, baby. You know something? That machine ain't gonna get back there. Yeah. I, I looked at how wide it is, too wide. Okay. You can push that silk bit down a little bit if you can. I don't know. You can yeah, push it on yeah. down and I'll have to pick it again. These are some of the things that you gotta make sure, you know, like I got some I got a bunch of pallets of um of um mortar that's on the back. And I'm delivering some more brick. I got about 4,000 more bricks to take care of the front of the house. And um, so I got to get the mortar from the back. Whoever, whoever did this, they put too many, too many pallets of mortar on the back. They should have put it right here in the front so the guys don't have to walk all the way from the back to bring that up here or get wheelbarrows and do manual labor. So we can get that machine. But the problem is, it's always a problem, guys. Let me show you this right here. So when we start... When we stack, because we're doing the side right here, so when we stack this right here, it made it, it made it to where Yeah, it was a mess, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, we brought yeah. the mortar in this closer to we Yeah, um, yeah, we can just get that, we can get that, uh, get them bricks right here up okay. in the front. Problem is, we had we had somebody put too many mortar bags on the back. Well, why did they put them on the back? I don't know, but we needed them. We got two pallets of mortar, and we finished bricking the back. Okay. We got two pallets need to come to the front, but the problem is, I don't know if that now machine... You, now we can't get through that. It can't no. get through there, can it? No, we're eight and a half foot wide, so we need a nine foot pad. Nine foot pad. Yep. Let me see if you got a... Mr. I don't care, but look at it from here until it ain't wide. Yeah, though. I know, I know. But, uh...
Yeah, you right. <laughs> you got a good eye, man. <laughs> I knew it too when you said hey. nine feet. I kind of, I just, sometimes yeah. I just like to try just to make sure. Yeah, yeah. And we can't get around that way, then. Yeah, that's what I, what I just said. Yeah. Why do they put those things back there? I, I have no idea. I, I wouldn't have ever put any of them back there. Sand up front. <laughs> I appreciate it. He probably wouldn't want me to take your equipment there. You, ain't gonna, you won't be able to use that one. He, he, they don't want to have the straight ones like that because yeah. they got to go vertical. Right, right, yeah. right. Uh, Okay, well, hey, man, it is what it is. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm sorry. All right, well, we're good. He, you got the angle on him, too. Is it yeah, I got one piece. Seven feet? Seven foot? Nope. Eight foot? Nope. He's about 48 inches. 36, 48 inches? No, nah, that ain't gonna be big enough. I told him seven foot. I, 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 I got in the back of seven feet. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think you got, what we got, sir. Well, I may, may be big enough for that one. Okay. Okay, we're probably missing one of them. I hope we are. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out today. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Let's keep it going, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm, you good? You good? Okay. Yeah, everybody good? Yeah, just, I'm training somebody. Oh, okay. oh he, okay. He's doing the work right now. Oh, he, oh, he's been. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna be bringing it up. He ain't gonna wreck. He ain't gonna wreck that machine, is he? No, I hope not. <laughs> hey. Oh, okay. It would be his job, not mine. So you winning right now? He's yeah, the driver's seat. All yeah, right, guys. I'm training. Let's kind of walk through here. Now, guys, one thing that's really killing me right now is I like for things to be, I like for things to be really clean. I don't like for trash to be everywhere. Uh, so I got to come back. You should have some trash bags in your car, right? Should. You got some? I think so. All uh, right. You, you, you should never have to think. You should always know. I'm messing with you, man. Come on. <laughs> Guys, it is it is it is critical too. Check this out. It's, it's critical. You may have somebody try to get on. Uh, they'll probably be coming up. You got an Antonio Bowie. He'll be coming up. But um, guys, you have to always um, like right here. This is one thing. With flashing. It's a good thing, man, because see what they do is they pull this up. They pull this up and they wrap the flashing down and then they pull it back down. You follow me? So what happens is you create what they call the shingle effect. Because what the water does, it runs all the way down, it runs over on top of the flashing, and then it comes out through these wheat ropes. And this wheat rope is to keep the insects and stuff from crawling in here, so it allows water to go one way. You see what I'm saying? So it allows the water to come down. And guys, you always got water on the inside of the house. So the water's on the inside of the house. It's trying to go out. It's going to wick through the wall. It's going to wick through this right here. Um, this is, uh, it, it actually goes through the sheathing, which is this material right here. Can you get that? So it goes through the sheathing, it goes through the house wrap, and the house wrap is what they call semi-permeable, so it can't go back this way, so it turns into bulk water and it keeps going down through gravity, and then it gets on this flashing right here, which is overlap, and this wheat rope is here, so what it does, it, it weeps out through that, through this wheat rope, so the water's getting out of the house. This is how you want the water to get out of the house, okay? So that's how it works. Um, and then you also have flashing around the windows. And I can, I can assure you, this is uh, probably not entirely, um, it could be better. Um, I don't like the way some of these right here are uh, built like that. But you also have, uh, if I look in here, we, we typically should have brick ties and stuff like that. Now, one thing I really like to do, guys, when you're actually building, you want to get all your MEPs out the way before you start bricking. Why y'all think that is? Wait, say that again? You want to get your mechanical, plumbing, plumbing, and electrical. You want to get all that done roughs. You want to get all the roughs out the way before you start putting brick veneer on the house. Why do you guys think that is? Well, I mean, you don't have to, but that's a good idea. Why do y'all think that is? It's easier when they lay brick. It also looks better too, yeah. But it's, it's easier for the brick guys to wrap around those guys because you don't want to have to come back. Say for instance, you see this pipe right here, which is the um, dryer vent. You don't want somebody to have to bust a hole with brick and then push the pipe through there and then try to fix it again. Not only that, you don't, and now you got to call your brick masons back out here again. Because I don't want to do it. I don't want to mix up sand and, because, guys, I did that one time and it looked like, it looked bad. It was the electrical part. And I bust a hole in there, put it through there, and I, I did it. When I mixed the mortar up, I didn't think you had to mix sand with the mortar. And when I got finished, it just, it looked bad. And we ended up putting some bushes around it where you can't see it. But, uh, 
So you want to you want to tell the guys you want your subcontract in order to make money? You want your subcontractor when they come out here. You want them to make money. What's the address? One three nine Jewels. Okay, one three nine Jewels Circle, Bessemer. So put in Bessemer, and then the um. With the navigation to put you it google maps and put you right here they, they, they put you right here didn't it yeah. all right so um so guys what was i talking about i forgot what i was talking about it looks yeah i was talking about something else you said you, you had no you don't want the subcontractor to come back out here yeah you want them to come out here one time and that's managing your subcontractor because here's the thing guys and i learned this from yeah i used to work with a place man it was just all chaotic guys it was messed up they used to have the um they used to just cause, here's what they used to do. They used to want, because you had homeowners constantly watching the site, right? So in order to appease the homeowners, because see homeowners, you got to understand those guys are paying interest. And if they don't see any work going on on that site, they're going to start panicking. But most homeowners don't really understand the process of construction. So the, the, the only thing the homeowners were thinking about is, I don't see anybody out here working. So since I don't see anybody out here working, I'm losing money. And that's not necessarily the case because what's happening on the inside and what's happening on the outside is mutually exclusive. They don't really have to depend on one another. So say for instance, uh, if a homeowner come out here and don't see the brick masons out here, well, they're gonna say ain't nothing going on. But man, we can be busting tail on the inside. Uh, even if you don't see any subcontractors out here, guys, the amount of phone calls that I pick up every day to schedule things and get things done, I mean, we are, we are working really, really hard trying to get things done. So just because you don't see people out here don't mean things are not getting done. Does that make sense? And what was happening was when, the, when they don't see anybody out here, they just say, well, ain't nothing happening. So I'm losing money. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that when the subs do come out here, they come out here one time because that way they can make money and you can make money, but it's your job as a contractor, as the builder or the superintendent to set it up to where that, that subcontractor is not wasting his time. So what you need to do is you need to compile a list of everything that that, that one subcontractor needs to do. So I'm, what I do is I make sure, say for instance, my, this guy is doing the siding, I have a list of everything that he has to do and I got it on my phone, every picture of everything he has to do. So when he comes back out here his last time, he can do every last one of them at one time to completion. Now he's not hurting us right now because the brick guys can do their thing and he's not really hurting us. You see what I'm saying? So that's how you want to operate this thing. You want your subs to make money. And here's another thing, guys. If your sub come out here and they're able to come out here and come out here one time and make a little money and then leave, guess what they're going to want to do the next time they come to your job site? They're going to pick your job site first. So they'll pick you over another builder. And not only that, if you pay them on time. Now, typically what I do is I pay my subs first. So the guys that actually come out here and do the work, I pay them first. Then I turn around and I pay the suppliers. Suppliers are next in line. And then guys, typically, I'm the last guy to pick, get paid. Now I know that goes against tradition. Most of the time, the person who's um, like the builder or the person that's in charge, if you get paid, you need to pay yourself first. But this is a little different, guys. I make sure everybody gets paid first. And then I pay myself, because sometimes, guys, I have to take a loss. Because see, ultimately, when things go wrong, it, it comes back on me. And then, you know you know something else too, man? I learned a lot, because now, um, if I get hit, and I lose, let's just say six, $700 because of something I didn't do or something I didn't schedule, I'm not gonna make that mistake again. I look at it as I, I, I wore that t-shirt, I put that t-shirt on, I'm not wearing that one again. That's a wrap. Oh, I thought he was playing at me. All right. All right, you guys, uh, you guys have any more questions? Can y'all see what the, um, where, y'all see what the grade of this property gonna be at? The final grade? How high do I need to be? I need to be at least, you see what this brick is right here? We gotta cover that up. And what's gonna happen is, if you look at this house right here, this the steps. I got this right here. Y'all know why I put, why did I put this right here, here, Matt? You know why? You see this, you see this right here, bump out right here? It's tied into the foundation wall. Why did I stick this here? Why did I stick it right here in the front of the door? What do you think I put that there? 
I don't know. Franny, you, you got an idea? Everybody waiting on me now, right? <laughs> uh, the reason I put this here, you can't hardly see it. In fact, what you're doing here right here, you can't hardly see it, but this is, this is, um, this is, this right here is along with the footing is, and it is attached to the walls, the foundation wall. And the reason I put it here is because this is what we're going to put the steps on top of. So when we build a step, we may have to put a couple of blocks up here. When we build this step, we're going to, the, the steps are going to rest on top of this right here. This is so that when the, um, when the house starts selling, you ever, you ever went to a house and you saw a, a crack right there with, between the steps and the house itself? That's because the house and the steps are selling differently because they put them on a different foundation. So I'm gonna put this all on the same foundation. Watch out, man, this guy gonna run over you. He won't get right here with you, man. You would get in the way, wouldn't you? <laughs> Get that guy right there. Right here? I don't know. Yeah. Six foot. Six foot. <laughs> it was six foot? Yeah, I think it's six foot. Oh, okay. Um, this right here is, uh, I hope it's seven foot, but um, this right here, guys, that's, that's about 1,200 bricks right there. About six, it's about 600 bricks in these cubes. That's 1,200 bricks. That right there is probably gonna run you about $500 delay. Okay? Now this is a little, this brick is a little different, guys. It, uh, back in the day, I'll tell you what we used to do. Back in the day, guys, we used to, um, if I'm gonna paint the brick, we're gonna paint this house right here. But if I'm gonna paint the brick, I go to the brick company and I find some brick they got on the ground they're trying to get rid of. <laughs> and they used to have a whole bunch of brick on the ground and they're just trying to get rid of because it's taking up space on the ground, right? Well, they don't do that no more. Somebody done figured out a way to make some money off of this thing. So what they do now is they, they don't do that anymore. So what they do is they make a brick specifically for painting now. Now, when I used to buy the brick that was on the ground, they're trying to get rid of because, you know, it was an extra run. It was too much brick on one run. See, well, guys, when you buy brick, you got to get it off in the same run. When they make it, they need to make all of them together back in the day when you didn't paint brick. Because if you don't get it from the same run, I can sit here and I can look at that house and I can tell what the different runs are. Because it's, it's, it's not going to be the same, the same color. So sometimes you have brick that was on another run that they're trying to get rid of and they'll sell it to me for a third of the price. So I come back and I take the money that I'm saving from the brick and I use that to paint the house. You see what I'm saying? Well, now they don't do that anymore. So what they do is they sell a brick specifically for painting, has the texture on it that you need. Now it's not, it's not a third of the price. It's two thirds of the price. So it's cheaper than regular brick, but they make a little bit money off of it now. <laughs> the brick companies make a little bit more. They making money off of it now. Does that make sense? All right, y'all, y'all ain't got nothing. Anybody? God, am I? You know, I'm doing good or bad. Now you can see right here, guys, where this right here is hardy board right here, guys. So hardy board, um, we'll put some of this on in class. But hardy board is almost like putting brick on here. And all it is, it's a product, man. It's a product just as strong as brick, just as good as brick. It's porous. It's a bunch of concrete. It's crushed, crushed concrete. And you take a glue and you compress it all and you make hardy board. Okay? And it allows moisture to go one way. It allows moisture to wick through it. So that is also a good thing too. All right. Um, question on hardy board, man. It breaks easy. Huh? It breaks easy. It, it what now? It breaks it break, easy. Yeah, you, you don't like the food with it, don't you? Especially when you deliver it. All right, come on. Hey, you, you can ask that guy right there, man. He'll tell you where to put it at. Y'all tell him where to put it at. I was looking at that. Look like y'all almost punch a hole in this car. Now, guys, on this house right here, the way I designed this right here, if the reason I lift this, uh, I want you to show on the road. Show on the road right here, man. See how the road, if you go from the road 
and chew on the slab right here. The basement slab. To that basement slab, to that road, is a one and a half foot difference in elevation, right? So anything that gets over here, it's gonna drain to the road. Now, if you look behind us, you have what they call, the, we call it, um, the surveyors call this right here a watershed. So all the water, a lot of water in this neighborhood is being dumped right down here. It's coming straight down here. And it typically should go straight to the road. So the reason we lift this out, the reason you see this, you see this grade of the house, get the, get the grade of the house. You see how it comes right here? We set this like this. It's gonna look, it's gonna look natural once I get everything in, once I get the final grade in. So we're gonna lift it up about three more feet. So we're gonna lift this grade up about three more feet, which is um, a little bit higher than the bottom of those. Um, you see all that stuff at the bottom gonna be covered up, you know, with a brick and all that. Um, so you go about another two feet higher than that, which is about one, two, three, four, five, six courses of brick up. That's probably what the final grade is gonna be. And it's gonna look natural. It's gonna flow down and it's gonna really look like, get this house over here. It's gonna look like that house right over there. That's not how we're going to look. It's going to be about the same. And guys, I did the grade on this house to match that house. Be very the same grade. And I, I, I calculated this and, and, and set this from day one. So the bottom line is, when you're jumping into this stuff, you better have a plan. Does that make sense? You better have a plan. Your plan better be from day one. And so what's going to happen is, it's going to grade away. It's going to look natural. It's going to look like their own little hill. So it's gonna look natural. The house is gonna sit in a real nice place, but all the water that's coming from behind us is gonna get on this driveway right here. We'll put a little swell in it, and we'll take all that water and push it right to the front of the road, and then all that water will go into the neighborhood. The neighborhood um, storm drain. That's how it works. That makes sense? Yeah. Man, you guys, uh, either you guys know everything, or, uh, uh, um, You guys don't know what to act. All right, so we got um, so we got this side right here done. Typically, the brick masons are gonna start at the lower side, which is right here. Uh, and this house right here happens to be three side brick, guys. That's probably that's that's probably gonna end up being your when you have three side brick. That's usually your most expensive basement, okay? Because you got brick all the way on three sides. Um, and let me see, everything, I should have my garage door, it should be coming pretty soon. So we got we got that on, the, that coming. But you see this guys, when they came here, they dumped all the sand right here. That's not doing us any good right there. This is another thing that guys, you gotta be on top of. You gotta, um, smell like something dead over here too. Y'all smell that? I think it's the eggs. Huh? You think it's the eggs? Yeah. Or oh, something, something like a dead snake or something. God, Probably the eggs. Huh? Probably the eggs. But, but the eggs are gone, the, the, okay. I saw my his, um cooking the other day, man. They was cooking omelets. And they, man, they look good. I was like, man, I need to fix me an omelet. But this sand right here, so we put this sand here. Um, this guy dumped this sand off here. They put two loads here when they, they shouldn't have done that. The brick guy should have put one load here. They should put one load up, up top. These are the things that when you, I guess the more experience you have, the better you get, okay? Um, and you know, now really it would have been idea if the brick masons told these guys to do that without me having to tell them. But as the builder, guys, you're responsible for everything. If you're a superintendent or the builder, you're responsible for everything. When stuff go wrong, you got to eat it. You got to own it. It's my bad. I never, ever say, I never, ever point fingers, guys. I never, I never point fingers at any of my subs and say, well, you messed up or you did this right here. Now, if somebody, if one of my subs jacked something up and, and they did something totally against what I told them to do and I can document it then at that point what I'm gonna do is I'm going to back charge them in order to get it right okay I can't take the hit if I told you what to do but if I tell you to do something and it was done wrong um, I, I eat that okay um, so we got this here and this is why guys you see how this right here looks this is why this is why I do that this is why I make sure that um, I rather have all these things sitting out here first um, beforehand. See now, right now, since this is here, I'm gonna go ahead and call my electrical guy, my electrical contractor, and tell him to go ahead and put the box here. Matt, you should know why I would tell him to do that. Why would I do that? 
Why would I go ahead and tell him to go ahead and set the meter box? So when you grade the house and everything, you know where it doesn't affect, they know where the meter box is at so they don't go over it. I'll tell you what, up. who is the people that install the underground power? Who does that? Alabama Power. Alabama Power. Alabama Power is not gonna, they're not gonna run that underground until they see a meter box. You see? So if that meter box is sitting here, then I can go ahead and get my underground already ran. Because we are gonna be at final grade or higher. You see what I'm saying? So they can go ahead and run the underground, have that thing sticking up here, and then we can go ahead and start working on this grading right here. So we can already have the power already set up. So when it's time to go ahead and connect the power, we already got it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start calling them guys now. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, Cause it, hey, the utility companies like Alabama Power, Allegasco, Aspire, I think they Aspire now. And, and all those guys, cable companies used to come in at the end. But all of those guys, you want to go ahead and call those guys right now because it's going to take them two or three weeks to get out here. And, and by the time they get out here and do what they got to do, I got everything already right for them. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. All right, so I'm coming in here. Let's see if we figure some of this stuff out. Anybody know why I got that sheet rock up here? Up where? Sheet rock up on the ceiling, sheet rock up here. Why, Why do I have to put sheet rock there? It's a fire rating. Huh? Or it's just a fire rating. Fire rating. So what, I'm, what am I doing when you say fire rating? What am I doing with the fire rating? I'm just separating the... Well, car, anything that's combustible has to have at least a 30 to 40 to an hour fire rating proof on it. So these sheet rock are thicker, therefore they're fire rated. I mean, you know how thick they are? Hmm? You know how thick they are? Inch she's probably even half inch, so these right here are inch five, five inch. inch. Okay, fine. You might be learning something, ain't you? What? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I'll tell you what. Well, okay, well, okay, so, all right, so if I got, if I got that as a fire rating, we got that. So that wall right here has to be there. This right here has to be right, right there to separate the living space from the garage, right? To where you have the bus stuff. Why did I sheet rock this? Right here? Huh? Yeah, right why here. did I sheet rock this wall? Ain't no fire ring going on here. Ain't no living on the other side of this right here. Why did I sheet rock that? Why did I sheet rock this right here? So I'm gonna get you down, buddy. Why did I sheet rock this? And this. Do you know what's behind those that sheet rock? Those are little bearing walls. Okay, what about low bearing wall? All right, you get that. Maybe. What about the low bearing wall? Well, very. They have to be sheet rock first because um, that one, some of because it's holds up the house and everything. So okay, all right, there you go. All right, that's that. These are structural members, guys. Any structured member has to be fire rated too. And this right here is carrying the load of the house. There's a wall right behind here. You know the walls is holding us up. And this right here, these are, um, this is where, these are beams that are going across here. And this right here holding up those beams. Body, man. All right, let me see if I can get them again. I'm gonna get them again. I'm gonna get them again. Uh, all right, he ain't gonna get this right here. Why do I leave a hole right here and a hole right there? Just show me the hole. Got a hole right here. Come over here again. Why do I leave a hole right here and then why did I come back and leave a hole right here? That's where your main plumbing runs. Which one? Huh? Which one? The main plumbing runs through here. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. No, no, not quite the main plumbing. I get that, main plumbing. We still come. What is it about? What's up above here? Point it up here so they can see it. What's up above there? You know what's above there? It's a bathroom. It's a bathroom, but it's a bath tub. tub and the plumber hadn't connected yet. So he has to have a trap that goes, you know, a, a P-trap that goes to the tub to keep the sewer gases from wicking through and affecting the people on the inside. So that's why we got that there. All right. Now this right here is a little bit different. This is because, you see that, that uh, light fixture right there? And I got another fixture right over here. You can see it right over here. Use your main garage. It needs to be. It needs to be dropped down. So I just need to drop it down. You know, like I got a plug right here. It needs to be dropped down so that we can, uh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. 
And so that's why I left that open so they can drop that down. All right. Good. All right. Uh, any questions so far? Anybody got anything? Nope. Okay, let's keep moving. It gets dark down here, man. And, uh, keep going. Can you see? We got some trim carpets you gotta get in here. They got a little stuff. These right here, what you call case openings, so they're gonna get in here and do these case openings. And um, we end up doing a change order right here. So instead of a guys, I just found out the difference between a French door and a double door. Well, isn't a French door like a box door? This, this right here. Alright, but well, they, they took it down. But this is what we had up in there. We had this, this is a double door. What do you think the difference between a double door and a French? That's a double door. What do you think the difference between a double door and a French door? That's French, right? Yeah, that would kind of be a French door. I would call that a French door. Is it how the wood is? If I put it on the inside of the house. Is it how the wood is? Well, not quite. Oh. The way it opens. Glass? Okay, yeah. That's the difference. The difference between a French door on the inside of the house, you got glass, you got lights in it, they call them French door. If it don't have any glass in it, they call them a double door. Okay. Here's another thing that we got ourselves into. This right here is the car facility. This looks like it took more work than what I thought it was going to be. We got to finish that up. Uh, hopefully, we got cabinets on the way out here. Painters are doing their thing, now, guys. The painters. He, thank you. So he comes in. What they do is they come in. The sheetrock, they sand the sheetrock on new construction, guys. If you just paint a room that has already been painted, you can just get your rollers and just go ahead. But on new construction, because of the way sheetrock is. They got a lot of little fuzzy things on it, and if you just paint, start painting, you see all the stuff on there and don't look good. So while the guys are doing the sheetrock, what they end up doing is they um they, they do the joints, they mud the joints, they sand, and they do that about three times. Two to three times. A real good sheetrock, they only have to come back twice. Sheetrock. So when they do that, then they come back and they put the primer on. In most cases, the primer is the same color as the paint that they're going to use on the wall, okay? Primer is a base with paint to stick to. It sticks really, really well with primer. When these guys come back, as you see what he's doing right here, he has a light and he's finding imperfections. And he's smoothing those out again. So what he's going to do is, he's going to do all those, you can kind of see, come right here. You can see where, see these little spots right here. These were in, imperfect places. So what they're going to do is they're going to do all of that throughout the house, man, you know what I mean? And then they're going to come back and they're going to sand again. Then they're going to come back and put another coat on here. You follow me? And once they put that coat on here, then my, you can look at, then my electricians and all those guys can come back and put the covers and the, and the plug switches in here. They can come back and put all that in. Um, and so they'll be coming back. Once these guys do that, do that first coat on here, They'll come, once these guys do that, do that first coat on here, they'll come back, I have an electrician come back and put all that in. That way he don't have all that to do when he come to his final. All he had to do is just hang lights and put the stove in and all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Um, so this is what I'm Another thing they did too, which I like this right here, they put this little stuff on the windows so that when they spray the windows, you can just peel this off. So this thing, this thing get on the window. You see? So you just pull it off, and now you don't have to have somebody coming through having to clean the windows now. Uh, here's the thing. I'm gonna, the, the same crew that does painting, they do cleaning. So 
they, they're protecting themselves, so when they come to the cleaning, they don't have to see and spray all the windows like they used to back in the day. But that's a good thing, too. And so we also, they go ahead and spray all this right here. They spray the crown, and the crown is going to be sprayed with like a semi-gloss. All right? Now, in this case right here, you're going to have to take all the back. back. But um, in this case right here, these guys got an um, electric fireplace. Because this fireplace is usually just for aesthetics purposes only. Okay, so they're hanging the TV over that, so it's kind of, kind of over there. Anybody got, anybody got anything? Y'all sure? No, the case open. We get the cabinets in there. Um, I'm missing a door right here. So we got that on order. That's the only door I was missing. Um, Are doors and windows on the same um, lost pod? Like, I know you had to order the windows earlier. They're going to be separate. I know, but I'm saying, like, would you order the doors first? Or would you, like, I know you ordered the windows first. But would you also order the doors first? No, guys, I, I learned my lesson. The first thing you want to do, this is what you want to do. This is managing subcontractors and suppliers. When you break ground, and really, guys, when you go ahead and, um, really, when you break ground on that house, or when you pull the permit, go ahead and order your exterior doors and windows because of the weight on them. It takes sometimes 13 weeks. But they can, if they get them earlier, they can keep them in the warehouse until, they, until you're ready for them. But that'll be the first thing I do. My exterior doors and my windows. Once I get this house framed up, what you should do as a builder or, a con or the superintendent, is you need to get those plans and you need to walk each one of these doors. You can come see right here. Each one of these doors, I mark them. On my trim guide, we mark them. I mark them, I tell what size door and what swing is it gonna be, okay? Like this right here, LA means it's gonna be a left-hand swing. So I mark every last one of these doors. And I look at the plans and I make sure everything matches up, right? Then I have my trim guy come out here and me and him walk it together and he write down every last one of the doors that we're gonna need. He writes down every last one of the case openers that we're gonna need. These are case openers right here. You see what I'm saying? Um, and then we go ahead and order them, but you need to do that after you frame. Do not do it before. Do not try to go ahead and order the doors, the, the interior doors. Do not order those based on the plan. You really need to get that thing framed up. You gotta walk it. Because what happens is you're messing around to order something and you don't need it. Now you gotta pay for it. Because in most cases, when you order it, it's going to be a special order. They're not going to take that special order. So the supplier, they're not going to take that back. So you just order that, and you can get anywhere from two, three thousand dollars that you didn't, you didn't order from interior doors that you didn't need, because they ain't going to take it back. Okay. Another thing that we know is different over here, man. This is a this right here is a master right here. But another thing we got here is that the guy, I don't know, that's another right there. They cover up these right here. Why do you think they cover up these vents? So that all that dust, get that dust right there, man. See all that dust? You don't want all that stuff getting into your duct work. Because now it's going to pump that stuff out here. Man. It's going to dust up the place again. Uh, also here, so, so the, um, Tile guy has already started his stuff. He started his thing. He already tiled his whole floor. Now, typically, what I like to do, guys, I like to go ahead. Some people like to have their cabinets in there first, right? And then they like to come back and tile once the cabinets in. I would rather tile first because I don't want my tile guy bumping up against the cabinets, you know, stuff like that. I don't want him getting mud on the guy. I just Go ahead and get all the tile in there, get on out the way, and then go ahead and set the cabinet on top of the tile. Or even still, the homeowners come back through here one day, and um, they decide they want to change something, or change cabinets and stuff, they don't have to take all the tile out. They can leave the tile as it is. I have a wall that goes in the middle of here that I forgot, so we got to build a wall up right here. Just a small wall, like a little closet. So we'll build up between these two sinks, so that'll be something I have to add in here, so we have to cut this trim off um, these are little things that I'll make it mental note so I took pictures of them as well. So we got this towel. And we have the um, the wall towel. 
So this worked out really, really well. You kind of see how he got this right here. This guy's pretty good. Guys, it is really, really hard. It's harder to lay tile on the wall. So usually when you lay tile on the wall, it's gonna cost you double the cost that it would be laid on the floor. Does that make sense? Because you gotta deal with the plumbness of being plumb and straight walls and stuff like that. And it kind of gets off beat sometimes on, on, on this summer. You also gotta come back and put a mud bed here too. Okay? That's going on and we got the closet here. I'm just kind of looking around. And guys, what I'm doing is I'm looking around and making more mental notes. Making sure everything worked out. Another thing I'm also making sure of is that all my doors are swinging in the correct way. You want to look at your plans, you want to look at which way these doors are swinging, and you make sure they swing the right way. Because if they swing the other way, that's not consistent with the plan, and that'll be something that the homeowner will call you out on when you're trying to punch it out. So now you got to take this whole gym out, twist this whole door around, and do it all over again, which you don't want to get into that, because now you're at the end of the, you're at the, end of the process. You don't, want to, you don't want to do all that. You don't want to have to make it more work on it. So. Question, question. Now, me and the homeowner have already, we have already walked through and we have made sure all the electrical stuff is where it needs to be. The TV, like you can come right here and look at the TV plugs. Like, you know, we, I, I marked the height of these right here. We came through here together. These are things that we all did together. You see what I'm saying? And so, um, just to make sure we're all on the same page, the market. And then a good thing to do, guys, if you're a contractor, everything you do, y'all hear me now, everything you do as a contractor, it needs to be documented. If it's gonna cost you more, you need to document it. I know, guys, I, 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 I mess that up here once in a while because I'm gonna be so busy, I don't have time to be shooting documentation and stuff up. Because you'll be amazed, man, when people start hemorrhaging money, interest and all that kind of stuff and um and you get change orders and things things don't ever come down on call what's up man how you doing man maybe yeah. maybe get a weight room man <laughs> yeah. um things don't ever go down in cost things always go up so you want to make sure you document that this right here cost is going up because if you don't they're gonna let you have it they're gonna say why i gotta pay all this money i mean i don't know nothing about that Man, I'm telling you, man, people have selective memory when they start talking about a lot of money. You start talking about a lot of money. And I'm not saying they're trying to do that, man. I'm not saying that people are doing that on purpose. It's just, I mean, I do that. But, you know, when you start talking about a lot of money, two, three thousand dollars, I don't know much talking about that. You know, <laughs> you're going to work in my benefit. So y'all got to keep that in mind. So also, all the alarms, we've already got that figured out. We already had our electrical rough. So all the roofs have been done. That's the only way you can cover up the walls. When all your roofs are done. And don't, don't make the mistake I did, man. I messed up. One of the inspectors just signed off on one of the, one of the preliminary inspections. And I caught hell, guys. I caught hell. There was a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. and, but you make sure, guys, when you have an inspection card, and where's my inspection card right here? Here You make sure that going from one stage to the next, every last one of these things is signed. Because you know what's going to happen? If one of these are missing and you got to go to the next inspection and the other guy hold you up to, well, he didn't sign up on this right here. And you're going to have to either produce an engineer to say that you did it. And, 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 and whoever, if somebody messed up and forgot to sign it, they're gonna have amnesia. They're gonna tell you, well, I, I, I did. I didn't sign that. Like, you didn't pass it. You'd be amazed. You got to cover yourself, man, with document. I'm telling you guys, documentation is critical. Do not move forward if, document, if documentation is not right. Do not move forward at all. I keep this in here, guys. Um, we're at the stage two also, guys. Um, as long as I did this too. I got locks on the door. It's time to start locking this bad boy up. Another thing, you don't want a lot of people walking in this house. You don't want, on a bill job, I had to get, I, 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 I talked to my wife about this the other day. She went into a house that was a, let's try to go over here, man, because I can barely hear with that thing. Um, 
my wife went into a house that was um it was a custom job. It was a custom job. It was not like a job they're trying to sell, it was a custom job, right? And she was going in, wanting to look around and be known and see what folks got in the house and stuff like that. Um, and I told her, I said, don't do that. People don't want you in their house. They don't want you walking around looking at where they have their bathroom and they tub and all that. They, they don't want that if, if it's already sold. Now, if it's a custom house, I'm, I'm sorry, if it's a spec home and they're trying to sell it, they don't have a problem with it because they want you, they want to solicit customers. But if it's somebody's house and this right here is already a done deal, you don't need to be walking through this thing. I don't need neighbors coming in and getting ideas and stuff like that. No, we don't need that. Lock this sucker up. And then you have people coming in here looking at it. Well, he did this wrong. He did that wrong. They might go to the <laughs> I mean, you don't, you don't want that guy. So we got this thing on lock. I'm trying to lock it down. And not only that, guys, you know, like in the Ross Bridge area, and we're in the Ross Bridge area right here, there's a lot of stealing going on. They, they hitting these houses hard. Yeah, they coming in. They already took a set of, um, I don't know, sheetrock corners, those angles. I had a box of them that was down there. It was about $400. They stole them. They already stole them out of here. And um, I just didn't have a chance to go back to the cameras and see who did it. But what they'll do is they'll back a truck in. I can't see from my camera angle. I can't see who actually got it. But I can get the truck. So they, they still got it. They take it. I'm going to let this guy come on down, man. I want to run it in. We got some skills right there, man. Huh? We got some skills right there. Shoot, man. That, Nathan, you, you got any questions, man? You got uh -huh. any, anything about it? And we're talking about now, This is we, we're doing a sheet rock. These guys were the guys, these are the painters right here. Now, why do I let my, why do I let my painters and my sheetrock guy be the same company, the same contractor? Why would I do that? Because we go hand in hand and... Why would I let my, let me put it in, why would I let my footing guy be the same as my wall guy? Why do I need to make sure those guys be the same person? And you don't have to. You can switch it up. I can, I can hire a sheetrock guy, and then I can go get another set of guys to be my painter. I can do that. But I like for them to be the same. Why, why would you do that as a good contractor? Why would I? Because they're, they're, they're... Hey, 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 hey. They kind of show, like, uh, they hold each other accountable, kind of. There you go. There you go. The reason you want to do that, because at the end of the day, when we get done with this house, like when I get 90%, of the problem that we're gonna have in this house. Punch out, because we gotta punch the house out. So I punch the house out. When I say punch out, I'm gonna go through and find all the imperfections and things that need to be corrected. 90% of those corrections are gonna be paint items. Right? And so now, when I get my painter back out here to fix it, I don't want the painter saying, well, you know, we did a good paint job, but the sheetrock got it messed up. You know, he messed up, see, if he had done like this right here, and then you don't want a sheetrock guy saying, well, those painters ain't good painters. You know, they don't know what they're doing because they can fix stuff like this right here. You don't want that back and forth. See, you're in the middle of it. You got to get it done. I don't want to hear nothing about no painter. I don't hear nothing about So I just go ahead and get them. I just get one guy. So now you know what the problem is. If your painter messed up, it's your sheetrock guy. If your sheetrock guy messed up, it's your painter. So y'all fix it. I don't, care. I don't care about all that stuff in the background. Same with your footing. If my footing, I don't want the footing guy to say, well, if you get a crack somewhere, like I get a crack in the, um, if I get a crack on the um, basement wall, I don't want the footing guy saying, well, well, I don't want the, the basement wall guy saying, well, you know some, the footings weren't strong enough, the footing guy didn't do something right. And I don't want the footing guy to come back and say, well, no, nah, they did it wrong. As a, you see what I'm saying? You don't need that. Just let it be the same guy. Don't have them guys fight each other like that. Now we already put the tread on here too, guys. So we. We got that here, so y'all can kind of follow me up here. We kind of look up here. Matt, why did I cover up these trails? Wait, what? Huh? Why did I cover these trails? Well, the treads are usually on the final stage. You cover them up so they're not destroyed and keep people from people walking up and down the stairs. No, that ain't why I cover them up. Is it the finish on it? You don't want to mess it up? Yeah, I don't want these because you know these paint is going to come in with that spray gun. I don't want him to spray in that spray drop down on top of my trees. And now, I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna sand them, right? Cause it's hardwood, but that's just more work on the guy. So you don't want that to happen. 
Uh, so we got here. Now I'm gonna tell you something about attics, guys. According to code, you have to be able to access all the knee wall space. So this is attic space. We got attic space over here. That's why I got these two by two doors. And all these right here areas right here. So you need to be able to access all the knee wall in a house. Um, if I go through here, I can't crawl through here and get to here. That's why we have to put this here. And you'll see in a couple more places we got uh, openings, access doors. And so let me show you this right here too. You know, I was telling you, uh, remember I was telling you about that brick on the outside? Yeah. So we have to come here. Let's see. You see right here? Come right here, Mac, and get this right here. No, right up. No, don't, don't, don't mess around. You see why I got this right here? See, look why I got this right here tripled up. And the reason I tripled that up is because we're gonna lay brick. We're gonna lay brick on that on that right there, um, gable right there. So brick gonna be laid up here, and brick's gonna be laid all the way up here, all the way up this rafter. So you need triple triple rafters right here to support that weight of the brick. Now once that brick cures, it locks everything in place so it's not putting a lot of pressure on this right here. But until it cures, you need to be able to handle that weight so this right here don't start deflecting. Let me say triple rafter. Yeah, look look right there. You can see it. See, we got three. Oh, okay. We got three rafters right there. We got well, we got one, two, three. Okay. And that's the reason for us to do that. And see, guys, I go through and everything that's wrong. I go ahead and spray paint it. Like I put these spray paint. That means the guy need to do something. Um, you have to have. You have to know about loads, guys. This is. I'm telling you, that's critical. Understanding framing and loads, like these collar ties right here. Every other collar tie, you got to have them there. Um, I understood and, framing when you uh, when we had a uh, carpentry last semester. Um, when you say it's basically moving the energy to certain areas, so you're taking that load. You, you, like, okay. You're moving that load. You're taking that load from the top of that house and going all That's the way great. down. And then when you have like windows and stuff, you need to be able to have that load coming down and separating and going on this right here. And it goes all the way down to the footing. So it's not supporting part of the structure. There you go. There you go. And that's the catch. And some of the framers don't really understand that. Now your head framer will. I got a good guy. Uh, I can give him a shout out. Abelardo. Uh, Abel, I call him a bell. He understands how to frame. He got this figured out. Um... But the guys that he has, some of his workers, like a bail has to go from job site to job site. And so while he's there, sometimes the guys he has working, they don't quite get the loads and stuff. So, you you know, he has to come through at the end of the day and check them. But um, don't you be surprised. Everybody don't really get it like you think they do. Mm -hmm. You see? And um, yeah, you told me that. I got it right. I was like, okay. Yeah, like this right here being right here. See, you're strong, guys. See, I'm back right here. This thing right here. Come here, right here. This beam right here should be strong back. I was strong back this beam. When I, when I say by strong back, I run another one this way. That way, when, it's, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the humidity leaves, it starts trying to bend this way. It can't bend that way because this is holding it. Holding it okay. And then if it start, if the other one starts trying to bend that way, this right here is holding out. Does that make sense? And now you see why they do it now. And we should have, and we should have a strong back. See, I just caught this. Right in the middle of this span right here, that should be a strong back. Right, the prick down the middle of those joints. That's right. To keep those joints from bending. I see. I just caught that. So that's that's a mental note I gotta make when you give them a phone. Man. All right. So we've got. You guys kind of go through here. This is the. Um, and this is a Jack and Jill. I don't know if you guys have heard of Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill is where two bedrooms share a bath and a sink. It gets a little dark here. So he got his own closet. Has his own, um, what do you call it, lavatory? Or whatever you call it, lavatory. You got your toilet and everything. But they even have a shower here, but you got a tub as well. So you got two things. And then this guy got his own um, vanity. It's going to be right here. And then you got this one. Okay. And then, uh, like right here, you got to add access here. If we got to be able to access over here. We have to be able to access this attic over here. So right over here, I got another one over here. Um, now this is a little thing. I got to be real careful right here. So we got to get this up. So I guess we get the trim guys on here and put these rails up. So um, you know, you want. I mean, I'm thinking about the second you step down there. That's a wrap. That's how, 
Yes, it's about six. six. What is all said and done is probably around six. You look at the lot and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's probably what I'm saying. You're right on point, man. <laughs> I'll tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put no number out here on this right now. But, oh, here's another thing right here, guys. This is something else you want. All right. When we, uh, all right. When we walk in here, you want to have you want to have one roll out a brick right here, right? Mm -hmm. You want to have one roll out. Y'all know what roll out mean? Roll out is where you have the. Uh, let me see if I got one here yet. Roll lock is where you have the bricks turned at an angle like this right here, and it. And it gosh, I don't see a brick. Well, we're gonna turn them around like this right here, and it's gonna cap off this right here, make it smooth. You know how you turn the brick around on your windows and stuff? Mm -hmm. That's what we call, we call that roll lock. If you're doing soldier, they, when you stand them straight up like that, they call that soldier, okay? And then and when you're just running them just straight, they call that running, all right? You guys need to know that information when you're talking to your contractor. When you're talking to the guys, your, your brick masons and stuff, you need to be able to have that terminology figured out, okay? Um, but here, I want one roll out here. You know how you when you step right here, you have that little block right here, block brick right there? Yeah. So we're going to turn right here. I want one roll out here. One roll lock here, but here's the catch. When I pour concrete here, I want to have a slope from here all the way to here. So we had to measure this out already. We do have a slope. We checked it out. So we do have, it don't look like it, but we got a slope right here once we put that slope in there. And so you want that slope. Why do you want a slope right here on the front stoop? So the water can burn it. You don't want water. Now water ain't going to get in here. I hadn't had any problem. I hadn't even had a leak on this house. This is one of the first house. Man, I, guys. I had houses, man, my last couple of houses, man, with all this rain we began. I've been finding leaks, man. People been calling me to death. Uh, I got a leak over here, I got a leak over here. And in most cases, those leaks had nothing to do with me. It was somebody was developing in that neighborhood and it was running water. They was dumping more water on us. Uh, but, you know, I tried to do my best to try to get rid of that water. And then one of them, I think it was a design issue, which had nothing to do with me, but I tried my best to try to work something out with them, try to fix it, because at the end of the day, in their mind, you did it. I got a leak, you did it. Um, so you want to get that leak, you want to make sure that water runs that way. So if you do have a rain that's going to come this way, that water's going to get on here and run that way. So that, that's the catch on that. All right. Uh, anybody else? You guys are in a good class, man. Look at my little owl. You, you can see why somebody's already been walking down here with a two by four and hit the top of this right here. Y'all all right? Step through a nail. Yep. It better get me, bro. How much it gets you? This is a little bit. What? I know Let me see. Put it up. Let me see. Well, that's like a screw. That's a screw. How did that get you? Hey, right here. I, I just, did it hurt? Yeah, it's a little bit. Um, it's all right. It's, it's like I, I felt the tip of it. So these right here are called, uh, you can get these shoes right here. These are called indestructible shoes, I got them. Mm -hmm. They're steel toe. They look like Air Jordan, but I can step on the nail. Uh, they didn't cost me no more than about $30. What do you do in case of a leak? Leak where? In the, in the house. If I got a leak, I, first of all, I got to find that leak. And guys, let me tell you something about leaks. Y'all come on over here. You can get right here. Somebody type that question in. Let me tell you something about a leak, guys. It's a pain. You don't know where them suckers come in at. You can get a leak up here, and by the time you see that leak, it could have traveled 20 feet, and it's leaking over here. You got to find it. You got to find I got a guy, that's all he does is sniff out leaks. We go up there, now we're going to look at the flashing, we're gonna look at it, we're gonna look at the roofing, we're gonna make sure, and we're gonna check it, we're gonna double check it, and we're gonna see if we got everything right. And if I can't get all that right, and I can't get the roofing stuff corrected, I'm gonna find my, I'm gonna get my leak guy. And he, that's all he does, he sniff out leaks. I call him sniff out leaks. Cause like I said, you don't know what sometimes these things be leaking. But you can't get that, you, you, you can't allow water to get inside of a house. And the reason is, guys, water is it's more detrimental in a house than a fire. Why you guys think that? Because water creates moisture on the studs and it causes things to go bad inside the skeleton of the house. Say that again. 
water creates moisture and it, it deteriorates the studs and it's causing them to bend and, and fold in ways they shouldn't fold. So the house will be un unsteady. That's one too though. I didn't think about that. that. That is one. But what water does is lumber is organic. Um, and you got moisture and you got sunlight. When you put those three together, you create mold. There's only 10% of mold is dangerous. But you, you created a situation and environment where that 10% can actually be there. And when that mold starts growing, right, they create what they call spores. They have these little, like, these little tentacles on them. And when you ingest them, they get inside of your lungs, they grow. And if you got asthma or you're older or something like that, it could really be detrimental. It could kill you. Fire, you see a fire, you burn up, we're going to take this out and put it back. Yeah, so you gotta be you gotta be careful with that water. So yeah, you gotta you gotta sniff that leak out. You gotta find that leak. Um, and the first thing I do is while I'm framing, when I first my roof is one of the next things to go on. Like matter of fact, my first person that comes in, well, once I get the foundation in, I'm still on that I'm still on that leak. Once I get that foundation in. We get, the, um, we get the framers out, guys. Once the framers get finished framing, the next person you call in is your plumber, okay? Because this stuff can get wet. You get your plumber to come in and do this stuff, then you go ahead, while your plumber's here, you go ahead and call your roofer. Let your roofer go ahead and get this stuff in. Then what you want after that, and I'm sure it's gonna happen, you need a good brain. You get a good brain, you come in and you find, you look at the leaks in the basement, that's gonna tell you everything you need to know. And then you go sniff out that leak, and then once you find that leak, you need to correct that leak as soon as possible. Go ahead. Yeah, don't you want your plumbers and your, like, your plumbers and your electricians to come out together so no. that they can stay out no. each other's way? No, no, no. You don't want them guys, you don't want the plumbers and the electrician nowhere near each other. <laughs> you want the plumber to finish what he's doing and you want the HVAC guy to come behind that plumber and finish what he's doing. And then you have your electrician guy. After them guys are complete, <laughs> and you almost you to write them a check, then you have your electrician to come in. Now you can't have your electrician to come in while the HVAC guy is trying to finish up his stuff. Why do you think I'm doing that? Because all the, all the holes in the studs are already put in, so the electrician guy doesn't have to go in and finish That's the one reason problem. Too. You know, it's easier for the electrician to run around the plumber than the plumber to run around the electrician. Yeah. So you run his wire around. And not only that, you don't want the plumber to come in here and cut some of your electrical wire. And you don't want you, you don't want because when they cut a wire, now you gotta now they gotta when they come back to finish this house up, they gotta find that that problem in the wall. And ain't no tell what is that. And guys, you guys have noticed upstairs, y'all can see where every last one of the electrical outlets, I put a, a red line on the ground, on the floor. That lets me know where every last one of those plugs are. So that when my so that my sheetrock guys don't cover them up. But now you want that electrician to come in, and not only that, plumbers are very rambunctious. They get in, they get the saws on, man, one of them reciprocating saw, they just chop up everything. They just have a good time, man. They just cut through all your all your um, your joists and your girders. I mean, they just cut. I mean, they cut through it if you let them. I, mean, I got a good plumber, man, and my guy's really good. He he knows that all this is in the code book where you need to put your where do you need to put your holes? You can put holes in in uh, floor joists, but you need to know where to put them at. Yes, yeah, you need to know What's every the structure of the grain. Yeah. Well, no, you, there there's so many feet. Um, you can't you can't put them within the middle portion of the, the middle third of the joist and you can't you got to put them within the middle um the middle third of the thickness of it you see what i'm saying you can't put one close to the the corner of it because that joist is going to give don't give yeah yeah anything hey guys you guys see anything guys in the next couple of weeks it's not going to look like this um why do you what, why do you think we got this here man 10 extra bonus points. <laughs> Why do we have, no, you can show, uh, show, put, put, put the show on now. These right here are two between. What y'all think we got those? To send them back? Mm -hmm. To send them back? I ain't sending them back, I'm keeping these. We're gonna <laughs> use them with something. Yeah, that's a money. What we, yeah, that's a lot of money there. What are we gonna use them at? When you walk downstairs, what were you stepping on? 
staircase. You I step into two two by fours. That's temporary. Is you had to put them there. Yeah. You make these out of the treads. You see, because we're not going to finish the basement, so this is going to be our treads. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I asked them about these. I'm telling you, man, I'm on, I'm sticking on this number. So I bought these right here. For we ain't even bring this from another site. Yep. Because the first thing these guys are going to do when they have lumber, they just going to start making saw yeah. out of the lumber that I need to do. <laughs> yes, I don't want them doing that, so I just bring, if I had one site where they made it at, I just keep bringing them, we keep, keep recycling them. I just stick them out here uh, so they can use them. Um, I don't think I have anything else. Anybody else? Anybody online? Anything? Nope. Okay, y'all good, man? All good. Yep. this? Is this uh, got a angle going out from on the inside too? Right here, it's sloped right here. But not only that, it's sloped right here. This right here, it goes right up here, but this right here has a little slope on it, on the edge of it, it has a little slope right here. And so this allows, so the water can come in, but it don't, you see what I'm saying? It can't get up there, it's not gonna go up. So yeah, you want to try to slope all this right here to make sure that if I do get basement water, this is going to come out. Now, when they doing the foundation, are they angling for us so when you talk earlier about the rainwater first? When they, when they, no, 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 not the, um, for the, for the, for the slab, they are. Okay. For this part of the slab, they are. They're trying to run this water out this way. They're trying to slope it. And, and you can't just look at it and tell you, you got to have that. Um, and also the ground. This is critical, guys. When this, this ground needs to have that water controlled to where that water is moving away from the house. You need about a 20% slope within 10 feet of this house. So 10 feet away from this house, you need a 20% slope getting that water away from the foundation. Especially on the basement. And that's a code. Um, and you know, when you landscape, your final grade guy is gonna come in, he's gonna run that thing, he's gonna make sure you got a grade going away from the house. And then your landscaper needs to come out there and, and, and double down on what he did. Guys, it's good to have a good land. I'm telling you, man. And they, need to, they don't need to be so lazy. They, they need to get out there and check that grade. Put that little, that little level, that laser level out there just to make sure it's falling. Your plumbers do the same thing, guys. Your plumbers, it's pipes. He, put a, um, he puts a, um, a level on each one of his pipes, man, to make sure he got it fall. Guys, it all, everything is, man, it's, it's about getting that water away from this. this. This whole house is designed to remove water away from this, this house. That's what this is about. Um, and so, um, so yeah. So hopefully we'll have this thing, hopefully in about another two weeks, man, we'll have this thing totally different. I should be able to get these cabinets in. And uh, once you get your cabinets in, man, it's a downhill slide. Oh, pretty work. Uh, all the cute stuff. So the towel guy's gonna do his thing, and uh, guys, that's another thing too, man. I mean, people look at these like when you see it. Y'all, if y'all, if y'all came in here, y'all didn't even see this house. I don't know. I don't know. But there's a house up here. They framed the house. They probably been there maybe three weeks. Things are going really, really fast. And you're like, man, this homeowners come out here, man. If they see the framing part, man, we're we gonna be in our house, and I mean, it looks like we're gonna be in here in two weeks. You know, because that's what they see. The framing goes fast, guys. It's when you get on the inside, the detail stuff is what takes longer. It slows down. It's going to look like it's at a halt. That's because you don't really see all the little stuff that's going on in, in behind doors. Like I said, I, I tell my own woman, man, you don't see all the running and scheduling and all the little stuff that happens in the background. It's happening mm -hmm. to get these things done. Anybody else? Green, you got anything? Did you, did you get anything out of this? Okay, we gotta get Karina. We gotta get you out here on, on this building, man. Both of y'all. I need you guys to take your building license. You know, I don't think about it. Is it uh? Do they have like certain dates to take it, or you can just sign up and go and take it? You gotta go go online and check it out, man. Um, here's the thing. I do want to get a feel for it. But here's the thing, man. How, man, how much does it take? You? Eighty dollars. Eighty bucks per test. It's two tests. Mm -hmm. You got the um. You have the business the, side and the administrative and the building aspect. Okay, so he already been kind of look at it, but you got both the, the administrative is two hours, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the the technical side of it is four hours, right? And I think you got to make it like a sixty-four on each one of them in order to pass, which is not bad. Mm -hmm. um, the questions I think they have forty on one and 
Is it 80 on the other? 80 on the other one. Yeah. And so what that means is I think you can miss, you got about 2.33 minutes to work on each question. Each question. Yeah. yeah. The amount of time that you have. And then um, it's open book too. Mm -hmm. I would suggest you get the, um, the, the study guide. You may not even need that. I think you need the code. I had a code in there too. Look, man, eighty dollars for each test. Go ahead and just assume that you're gonna pay three hundred and twenty dollars for the test. Go ahead and just take it. Go ahead and just, guys. You, you, we have got to get to the point to where you invest in yourself, invest in your knowledge. We don't do that, guys. You know, I, I got people now just asking me about this bill and stuff. Hey, man. Uh, and they, some of the guys are just content with you having to call me and get answers from you. I stopped telling them, man. I stopped telling them, I said, hey, man, go take a test. Go get your bill's license. Go take a test. I'll, I'll take a class with me at Lawson, and I can teach you some, some about the bill's license stuff. We don't want to invest. We want people to just give you stuff. Man, if, it, if it's worth it, guys. And see, right now, you guys are getting this stuff for free. It's coming from me for free. But once I become really, really big, if I get become a multi-millionaire, I'm going to have to charge you million dollar prices for you to come in and sit in my seminar. So like right, right now, let's say for instance, if I do, because if you got get guys who's out there right now, there's million dollars right now, they're not going to give you this stuff they don't give you for free. You have got to invest in yourself, guys. And I know sometimes you don't see the reward, but knowledge, man, is so critical, man. I would spend any money on, on, on my mental and mind development and my training, developing myself. Um, Go ahead and take it, man. Just like, okay. If you go, I want to say that some things in play, but yeah, I'm yeah. gonna take it. But if you are gonna fail, okay, go ahead, fail it. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. That's what I told him. I told him. I told him, man, go ahead and just take it, man. If you fail it, you fail it. So what? Now you know what to feel. you know what to feel now. Because when I took it, guys, I lost my builder's license. I let it last me. I, I, you know, man, the economy goes up and down. I went through some hard times. I, I lost my builder's license. I let it go. I could afford to even pay uh, the renewal thing for uh, back during that time. And I let it go. And I had to go take the new test, the one that you guys are taking now. So I had to go back and take, see the old test, you just take one test. And the first time I took it, I failed it. I didn't even tell my wife when I went and took it again. Cause I didn't want her, I didn't want her, cause what she was gonna do, she was gonna ask me all kind of questions. Did you go take the test? Did you pass it? <laughs> and then I was gonna get nervous. Now I was gonna be like, man, God, no, I'm not. And then and I was like, man, if I don't pass this test, man, I don't have no lives, it ain't gonna do it right here. And so I was getting nervous, man. I didn't even tell her when I went and took it the next time. I just said, man, I'm gonna go ahead and take it. I flunked it the first time. That was back in the day, I flunked it the first day. And we only took it one, it was just one test. And I failed it. I, I mean, I was like one or two test questions from passing. I'm like, man, I can do this, man. I was like, man, I can do this. So I just scheduled, I didn't even tell my wife, I said, man, I ain't gonna do this deal. I ain't gonna no worry about it. I ain't gonna do this. Yeah, when I took my, uh, when I was, the massage therapy, much the national uh -huh. exam. That's how I was like, man, he's gonna take it. And I miss it by like a few, but it is good to get the. Then you weren't scared of it. You weren't scared. You're like, man, it ain't that bad. Nah, I ain't gonna lie to you guys. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. So now, the next time I took it, I passed. And I was like, okay, now I told my wife, yeah, I passed the test. Well, you didn't tell me you were gonna take it. That was the reason why he said it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but then, guys, and then uh, when I lost my license, they made me go take it again. Mm -hmm. So this, I don't know how many years ago that was. That might have been seven, seven years ago maybe. I had to take the new test, the one that you guys are taking now. And um, I said, you know, so I'm just gonna go take the test. I'm just gonna take it just to, you know, see how I'm gonna do on it. You know, I know I ain't gonna pass it. Do they require, once you get your, when you pass it, do they require like every year you have to do like C's, continue? Oh, I'm getting that, I'm getting that. But I, the, the next time I took it, I mean, the, 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 when I had to go back and take it, I had to pass it. I didn't even know I was going to pass it. It was kind of hard. It was kind of difficult, guys. They weren't playing around on this right here. Mm -hmm. I think what they were doing, they were producing too many builders. Now, I'm not trying to scare you guys, but they was producing too many builders. Oh, yeah, they do that. So they had to lock that test down a little bit. But, you know, it's, it's dual because we had a couple of students in my other class to take it, and they passed it. It's not hard. Uh, it's not that hard. Um... But now they do require you once you get it, and I got to do the CEU. They, they make now you have to do CEUs. You got to do six hours of CEUs every year to keep your license. Now, guys, you renew your license every year. It costs you about three hundred dollars a year. Uh, continue education units. What they want builders doing now is they want you to stay into the game. They want you to constantly 
refresh your knowledge of construction. I think now is like really key to really start doing those series because it's a lot of new building material being introduced and who knows one day it's going to be like how to do the gas prices. Oh, we ain't selling more gas vehicle cars. So now you got to learn the That's right. side of battery and all that. I'm glad you said that, man, because building has a, construction has a 50 year lag time. You guys know what lag time is? Lag time, well, I'm asking a question, but I'm yeah, man, okay. Lag time is how long it takes for everybody to accept what you're doing in your industry throughout the nation. So, um, like neuroscience. Neuroscience has like a two year lag time. So, in two years, whatever method these neurosurgeons are doing, everybody has embraced it and caught on to it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Education has a 30 year lag time. If you guys go into education and you're a teacher, by the time everybody figures everything out, it takes about 30 years to get everybody on board on one particular mindset. That sounds like um, the Bitcoins. That's right. Everybody, everybody but, that, but it takes time. It takes time. Building, yeah. it takes 50 years for everybody to get on board. If they come out with a new product, like uh, spray foam insulation, it's going to take about 50 years for everybody to be doing it. It's just accepted by everybody. So that's, you see what I'm saying? It just takes a long time. Um, so you're right, that's why you need to see you. You need to be studying this stuff. You guys need to, you guys need, I'm going to tell you something else too, guys. When you get out here and you guys start building, you guys are going to have to be so much, there's so many big boys out here that, that, that corner the market. You guys have got to be so good at what you do. You got to be able to have an angle on board. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I like, I, I still, I like the Elon Musk. I like, because he was trying to get people to embrace what he was doing and people didn't like it, but he came out with something new. But it really wasn't new, it was actually Chevy that came out with it. But he wanted, he wanted to be a maverick, man, and, and, and people, you know, they, they took it for granted. But he kept going, guys, he kept going. All right, guys, I appreciate you guys. Um, you know, if you guys came to us right here, if you got another class this evening, don't, you guys are good. It's going to be the same thing. I'm going to take, I'm going to go with the Ross Bridge. And you guys come in on, on live stream, too. Um, now, that, that house over Ross Bridge is, is, um, is at the framing stage. I got a lot of things I can talk about on that. That's the same one with it from uh, last year. Well, earlier this year. Yeah. Was it earlier this year? Yeah, earlier this year. Did y'all do the uh, foundation? The foundation, yeah, we yeah, doing the foundation. With the, you were putting up the basement and everything. <coughs> so I think that's the same one. Right? Oh, no, that was Trustville. You know? Yeah, yeah, that was Trustville. Trustville, we're about done with it. Yeah. Well, this house is about to catch up with Trustville. Yeah. That weather kills yeah, yeah, Trustville. It's raining. It's just raining. raining. But now, Ross Bridge, we're going to be the one on the framing. Oh, and, and foundation. So that's that's going to be, I think that's the concrete. So we're going to discuss a lot of concrete and stuff. All right, man, I appreciate you guys. And uh, you guys have a good day.